Fear Not, Episode 61. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Scott Carney. Welcome, Scott. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really well, thank you. Are you ready to fear not today? <laughs> sure. Let's, let's, let's stop fearing things. Investigative journalist and anthropologist Scott Carney has worked in some of the most dangerous and unlikely corners of the world. His work blends narrative nonfiction with ethnography. Currently, he is a senior fellow at the Schuster Institute for Investigative Journalism and a 2016-17 Scripps Fellow at the Center for Environmental Journalism in Boulder, Colorado. What Doesn't Kill Us is his most recent book, with other works including The Red Market and A Death on Diamond Mountain. His work has been a subject of a variety of radio and television programs, including NPR and National Geographic TV. In 2010, he won the Payne Award for Ethics in Journalism for his story, Meet the Parents, which tracked an international kidnapping to adoption ring. Scott, can you take a few moments to fill in the gaps and maybe also give us a brief glimpse of your personal life? Uh, well, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'm an investigative journalist. I used to be an anthropologist, uh, which meant I was interested in studying human culture. And, you know, most of the work that I do stems out of you know, basic anthropology questions is what makes us human. Uh, and every story I do sort of tries to address that question from a different angle. And yeah, I mean, I've written for a lot of big magazines, uh, Wired, Playboy, NPR, uh, you know, done stuff for TV. Uh, but, you know, regardless of the format, I consider myself sort of a, a, a storyteller and, and somebody who just really wants to to ask interesting questions and hope to find unexpected answers. Well, thank you for sharing that. And Scott, would you also share with us today one of the biggest fears that you've had to face? Well, you know, it's interesting. As somebody who's covered a, a tremendous amount of uh, dangerous situations, you know, uh, whether it is, you know, working in a war zone in central India or, you know, a, a, uh, going to meet a mafia boss in, you know, being surrounded by guys with guns or, uh, you know, any number of the other things that I've done, like sort of investigating cults where there's no backup. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've often found myself in dangerous places where, you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen next, but those have never made me scared. You know, it, it, I've always had the idea that you just have to get through these things. The things that, especially early on in my career, the things that scared me most were going into one of these events and then not coming away with a story that would end up in a magazine. So a lot of journalists that I know, a lot of war correspondents I know are actually more afraid of their editors, the people who are sort of perusing their work, than they are of say mortar fire or, or something which is you know rationally much more dangerous and should invoke more fear. And you know it, that it's one of those things that sort of when you're in the field, when you're being faced with one of these uh, you know pretty significant uh, challenges, the 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 fear of failing in in the career can actually be more dangerous because you know if you get shot, you know that's that sucks, right? That that's terrible. You you'll die right there. But there's sort of this slow death that comes with career death or when a story get might get rejected or not not go forward, which is um, in many ways, more distressing uh, than facing something which is just right in front of you. So how do you handle that? 
Well, it's hard. Um, it, it's and and it, it in in a sense, it's just convincing yourself that you're gonna be able to do this, and that 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 the other person's opinion of you doesn't define the value of your work. Uh, and it, it's something that I've talked to, especially a lot of younger writers, people who are sort of coming up through the ranks. It's something that I speak to them a lot about is that you really should be thinking about the actual challenge in front of you instead of the existential ones. And, you know, those existential challenges are often built on these sort of weird assumptions about what an editor might want or what you might want uh, in this and how a magazine might 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 work. And it's all these sort of professional career goals. But, you know, your job is to tell a great story, is to go out there and get uh, the information. So I generally tell people to realize that the guy sitting behind the desk at a magazine, uh, say in New York or San Francisco or wherever they happen to be, is not the one who is doing the impressive stuff. Uh, they're not the one who's actually on the front lines and, and yeah, you know, you should value your own work. So that's, that's how I deal with that sort of, I guess you could say fear or angst or something like that. And are there any sort of resources that you've come across that help that have helped you to deal with that, that you might be able to share with us today? Uh, not really. I mean, you know, I think that this this has to do with understanding your own value. Uh, and, you know, as far as resources, I mean, you could talk about meditation or sort of writers groups. But I think understanding and, and connecting with a community of people doing the same sorts of things is very important and very resilient. And, you know, I'm not guessing that your audience is mostly war correspondents, um, but certainly reaching out to people who are doing uh um, similar work and facing similar challenges, there's something in that communication which can sort of bring a, a rational understanding of, of the world around. Are you ready for the speed round? Oh, yeah. Let's speed it up. Okay. What individual that's either fiction or real has made the most impact on your life? Uh, Ernest Hemingway. You know, I think that, that his uh, very cut and easy uh, writing style it hides this this intense uh, complexity is probably the you know the writer that I go to most uh, as an as an impact yeah and if you can instantly change one thing in the world what's that change going to be I would like people to have free time you know if I could change one thing I would like people to be able to pursue the goals that they want not the goals that that they're they're told that they have to pursue and try to reach out for your creativity and your own uh, things that, that actualize you. I think that would be the most, that would be a, a wonderful thing to change. What's your biggest weakness? Uh, uh, failure, you know, going out and, and, and not succeeding at something. I mean, that's a, that's a, a thing that happens a lot. Maybe, may, maybe more to the point is believing that I can do anything. <laughs> And then finding out that that doesn't work. Going in with too much hubris or too much confidence uh, has been a, a problem occasionally. What's your biggest strength? Perhaps the same thing, right? Maybe the same. The strength is the weakness, is going in with confidence that you can take on big projects and uh, take on big challenges. And if you could only have one book to read, what's that going to be? Oh, man, that's horrible. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Maybe The Tiger by John Valiant. What a great book about a big cat that wanders through Siberia uh, uh, wreaking revenge on the people who tried to shoot it. It's a it's a wonderful book. Do you have a favorite sound? Not I don't think so. I mean, you know, I when I used to drive motorcycles through uh northern India. I I drove across India twice on a motorcycle and uh and there's the sound of a Royal Enfield bullet, which is very satisfying. It's a very low thump. It's not one of these sort of really loud, horrible things you might get with a Harley or something like that. And it's it's very constant. That's pretty nice. I also like the sound of my cat purring. Yeah, that's a pretty nice thing. And Scott, if someone would like to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? I have a website, scottcarney.com. Uh, I have the Twitter feeds and I'm on Instagram. Uh, those are both SG Carney. And, uh, you know, a little bit of Googling can find me, no trouble. And Scott, what parting advice would you like to leave with us today? I'd say be confident. You know, you are more capable of more things than you know or realize. That's really great advice. And thank you so much. 
And Scott, I want to thank you for coming on the show today and sharing your story and your experiences. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.